Over in the pages of Marvel's core Amazing Spider-Man series, the publisher is headed back to the alternate dimension of Limbo in order to create some interesting dark fantasy storylines over for Spider-Man. Over in the last issue of the series, we got to see Madeline Pryor summon the villainous Repossessor in order to stop Peter Parker and his funhouse limbo reflection known as Rec Rap. My name is Arako Braddock, and today, let's go ahead and see if Peter and Rec Rap can fight back against the limbo-esque possessor. But before we get deeper into the video, I want to encourage you to consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the like button over on this video. Gang War First Strike, Rec Rap Returns, Spider-Man's Fun House Reflection might just be the thing to help the wall crawler out of the darkness he can't seem to shake. Well, Rec Rap might, if he weren't targeted by the scariest new Spider-Villain in decades, Gang War is coming. Amazing Spider-Man issue 37 is still written over from Zeb Wells featuring art from Ed McGuinness. We have special interlude art coming in from Emilio Lyso. In addition, we have inks from Mark Farmer, Wade Von Graubadger, and Ed McGuinness with colors from Marcio Menis and Eric Arcienega. The letters are coming in from VC's Joe Caramagna, and the cover for the issue is illustrated over from Ed McGuinness and Marcio Manis. Really like the way that Rec Rap is juxtaposed over with Spider-Man's pose over on this cover. Also appreciate some of the logo design introducing the fact that the Amazing Spider-Man is just about to head into this massive gang war story. And I want to extend a quick thank you to Adventures in Poor Taste in Prelude. Some of the interesting artwork coming in from Ed McGinnis here really thought some of these opening pages over with Rec Rap story time was just a really subversive way to introduce the narrative here. Watching Rec Rap talk about his first-hand experiences with characters like the Kraken is very interesting, especially given the way that Rec Rap himself tends to interpret some of these events over on the page. Over in this next sequence, I thought it was absolutely horrifying to follow up on this sequence of the Kraken over with the character of Repo. This sequence over with Rec Rap also really helps establish Repo as a threat over to the pages of Amazing Spider-Man 37. This is actually the final page of this more animated sequence from Ed McGuinness, and we're introduced to even more tension over between Peter Parker and Rec Rap on this following page here. Well, I did think a lot of the story scenarios and conversations between Peter Parker and Rec Rap were really irreverent and a lot of fun in this issue. I almost thought that Zebwell's script forced a little bit of conflict over between these two characters. I'm always fascinated by the incredibly subversive way the Amazing Spider-Man series goes back to previous plot threads in introducing this book with a more casual repo and Randy Robertson, I thought was incredibly subversive in a great way to reintroduce a former Amazing Spider-Man cast member in a different context over in this new storyline. One of the best aspects of Repo over in this comic book issue is how he's able to appear over in a more plain clothes setting. I feel like it just does a great job building up some of the intrigue and in setting up the fact that Repo is actually a very smart and intelligent villain over in the Spider-Man universe. I also wanted to quickly give a big shout out over to this gang war sequence from Emilio Lyso. I really thought Lyso's line was incredibly nimble and expressive over in this sequence. I also really appreciate some of the ways that Zeb Wells is able to take some previous plot threads and spin them back into the main Amazing Spider-Man series just in time for the gang war. All the dialogue between these New York City crime lords is written incredibly well, and I think Hammerhead in particular has a few really fun moments over in this series too. Following this moment, I think Amazing Spider-Man 37 just does a fantastic job building up to some of the climax and the big fight scene over between Peter and Repo. Really like the brisk way that this storyline is tending to unfold and the fact that this sequence is really serving as a prelude over to the greater Amazing Spider-Man series. 
And I think one of the most interesting aspects, too, about this arc is the fact that Madeline was really pressured into creating this character of Repo just based around some of the feedback that she was getting in Luke Cage from the past installment here. So at the end of the day, I think Amazing Spider-Man 37 is yet another incredibly fun chapter in this series, really fleshing out the characterization over for Rec Rap as a hero. Watching some of Rec Rap's first-hand experiences over in the narrative was a ton of fun, and I think Ed McGuinness's really rounded line did a great job fleshing out some of these aspects over in the storyline here. Also, the plainclothes settings with Repo add this really interesting horror element over to The Amazing Spider-Man that really makes it just such an incredibly interesting book. But I think my favorite thing about this particular chapter of the series is just the uncanny way that Wells continues to introduce characters who you never thought would head back into the narrative in some really subversive ways. I know that Jenny Lincoln is headed back into The Amazing Spider-Man soon, so using Randy Robertson in this capacity is just an incredibly fascinating way to keep me guessing all the way until the opening pages of The Gang War. I want to know from you, did you enjoy Amazing Spider-Man issue 37? What were some of your thoughts on this really interesting chapter of the series? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching our video review on Amazing Spider-Man 37. And we'll be back to see what Gang War and the rest of this series has in store. Thanks so much and I'll see you soon. Bye.